Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Amazed by the Quran, a series in which I try to share with you things I find amazing about the Quran. In today's session, I want to talk to you about a very powerful expression of the Quran, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim. Something that's found in the Fatiha, occurs again in Baqarah, occurs in Surah Al Hashr, all over the Quran, numerous occasions, you find Allah saying, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim. Both of these words, uh, in, a, in one way or the other, refer to Allah's mercy. And the challenge with translating these words is that because they belong to the same origin, um, they almost seem synonymous. And a lot of times in English translation, we actually use words that are rather ambiguous to translate them. So the most beneficent, the most merciful, or the most merciful, the most kind. These kinds of translations are very common, right? And the problem with them is you can't really tell the real essential fundamental difference between the most merciful and the most kind. So let's try to explore some of the benefits of these two words together. Had I been giving you a talk on just the benefits of Ar-Rahman by itself, that would take a while. And its origin and what it comes from and how it's related to the word Raham, the womb of the mother, that's a separate subject. But today just the dif distinction between these two and the fact that they come together, what does that produce? Okay. Uh, think of Ar-Rahman as having three qualities. The first word, Ar-Rahman, think of it as having three qualities. Words that have that an at the end, that pattern in the Arabic, it's called Sigatul Mubalagha. That's not so important. But it, it really produces three you know, connotations. The first of them is that words like these are extreme in their meaning. So for instance, if something has an an at the end, if you say someone is knowledgeable and you put an at the end, they're extremely knowledgeable. Okay, so it, it makes the quality extreme. That's the first. The second is that it makes the quality transient. And what that means is it's not something permanent. So in the Arabic language, atshan, notice the an at the end. Atshan is someone extremely thirsty. But thirst, as you know, is not something that lasts forever. Jawan is someone extremely hungry. And hunger is not something that lasts forever. Similarly, ghadban is someone extremely angry. And as we know, anger does not last forever, except in some cases. But anyway, so but extreme anger at least doesn't last forever. So an is used in extreme cases and cases where there's something temporary, okay? And then finally, uh, to put it really simply, the an is used for words that are describing something that is taking place at the very moment. In other words, you're not describing someone who tends to be extremely angry or tends to be extremely thirsty or tends to be extremely hungry. You're talking about someone who is extremely thirsty or extremely hungry or extremely angry right now. These are the three implications. I'll repeat them very, very quickly. Extreme, temporary, and immediate. Extreme, temporary, and immediate. Now, if you apply that to the word Ar-Rahman, you'll appreciate something about the word Ar-Rahman. Allah's mercy, His love, His care is extreme. It's not some you know, normal mercy. You know, there, there are moments in a person's life where they're demonstrating mercy and care. Then there are points where they spike. And so Ar-Rahman is describing the spike in the Rahmah of Allah, the love and care of Allah. The second, the scary one is that it's transient, but we thought every name of Allah is permanent, so it should always be the case. But as Ibn Abbas will describe, that Ar-Rahman uh, actually refers to Allah's mercy as it manifests on this earth, in this life. It makes sense because this life is not permanent. right? So Ar-Rahman applies more directly to this life. And we'll see that in a second, well, how, how else that applies. But for now, even though temporary sounds a, a bit philosophically problematic, leave it aside for a second. And the third thing was it's happening when? Immediately. Now let's compare this to the two qualities of Ar-Rahim. That's the next word. Also has to do with mercy, love, care. But it has two qualities. Now remember, Ar-Rahman had three. Ar-Rahim has two. These two qualities are one, that it's referring to something that is always the case. It's not just something happening right now or happening temporarily, it is happening. It's, it's taking place or it exists at least, that's the better way of saying it, it exists throughout. So for instance, when you call someone patient, then you've described a quality that they have. Or if you describe a car as red, it's a state of the car, it's not something that's gonna change. You see what I'm saying? Or you describe the sky as blue, then this is a quality of the sky, okay? Now, uh, or you know, an adjective of water being pure or something like that. These are constant states, okay? That's the idea of uh, Rahim, Fa'il, that pattern. That's one, that it's constant. We'll put it like that, simply speaking, it's constant. The second piece of it is that it's not necessarily taking place, meaning it's not acted out, it's potential. 
to make this easy to understand, if I say about my wife, she's patient, right? And that's a quality that she has. But right now she's not here, alhamdulillah, so I can talk about her. But she's not here. Maybe she's not being patient right now. Maybe she's actually being the, quite the opposite. In other words, she has the quality of patience. But it doesn't necessarily mean that it's being demonstrated right now. Similarly, you can say somebody's wise. But while they're sleeping, they're not demonstrating the quality of what? Wisdom, right? So you can have a quality, but it's not being demonstrated. You, you get what I'm saying? Now this is very different from Ar-Rahman, isn't it? Because in Ar-Rahman, it's being demonstrated when? Immediately. So now, three qualities of Ar-Rahman, and what are the two qualities of Ar-Rahim? That it's constant, and it's not necessarily being demonstrated, it's a dormant quality, okay? Now, think about this. Why is Ar-Rahman first? Human beings, put it, put it simply, human beings, we love immediacy. I like to give the example of somebody who works all week and they're gonna get their paycheck on Friday, but their boss who hands them the paycheck isn't there. He's stuck in traffic somewhere. Right, and it's 4.45, I need to go, five o'clock, because I need to go immediately, because I need to catch a flight, and I need this money, I need to deposit it immediately, because I'm gonna need this money, and I don't see my boss, it's 4.45, and somebody comes to you and says, relax, relax, relax. The boss, he'll be here. He's reliable. He has a quality of what? Reliability. And you're like, yeah, I know he's reliable, but I wish he was being reliable right now. I don't need his quality of reliability to be dormant. I need it to be taking place at the moment. I need it right now. You see what I'm saying? Human beings, when they have a problem, they don't think about the constancy of a person's qualities the one whose help they need, they don't think about the dormant quality. They want that quality manifest, immediate. Our immediate concerns need to be met. So the immediacy. And what we want immediately is not just in small amounts, we want it in big amounts. We want it in big amounts. That's just human nature. I'll, I'll give you an example of hunger. If I'm super hungry and I'm cranky, and I go home, and I call my wife ahead of time, hey, you have anything at home? She says, yeah, yeah, good, good lunch at home. And I get home, and instead of giving me the lunch that she promised, she says to me, what do you want to eat tomorrow? I say, I don't care. I just need food right now. I'm about to chew off my own arm. Can you just give me some food right I can't think about tomorrow. What am I trying to tell you? Human beings, when they have an immediate need, they cannot think about the future. They can only think about the immediate. When the immediate need is met, if I satiate myself, I eat to my fill, what were you saying about tomorrow? Isn't that what happens? Happens with money. If you need to pay the bills, if you need to buy the thing right now, if you need to make the payment, all you can think about is right now. The moment you pay the bill, the moment you, you know, uh, fill in the tuition, then you start thinking, well, how are the savings? How are we going to use them? Do you have enough for next month? Do we have enough for next week? You start thinking about the future. Look at the beauty of these words. Ar-Rahman is immediate. Because human beings are concerned first and foremost with the immediate. But as soon as the immediate is, is met, and met more than you can imagine, in an extreme way it is met. Allah's rahmah comes, Allah's love and mercy comes in extreme you know, amounts. And it takes care of your immediate need. As soon as your immediate needs are met, you start worrying about what? The future. And so Allah says, He's also ar-Rahim. It's constant. So where one takes care of the immediate and the other takes care of the future. It's so awesome. Now imagine if this was flipped. Why isn't it flipped? Why isn't it ar-Rahim, ar-Rahman? You know, that would actually suggest that right now, you just have to trust Allah's potential of being merciful. And eventually it will what? Manifest. No, no, no. It manifests right now. And you can trust that it will all, the potential, the rahmah is something constant, it will always be there. And the last thing I'll share with you that's really beautiful, said by Zamakhshili and some other scholars, is that words that are immediate and extreme, they are acting out, like we said. And words that are adjectives like Rahim are constant and level. They're not extreme. And they're not being acted out necessarily. So he used to compare Ar-Rahman to a violent ocean, like waves crashing on top of each other. And you know, like it's, 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 it's taking on this extreme form. And then he used to compare Ar-Rahim to the calm ocean. And he said, I, it is beyond my imagination to, to, to think of an ocean that is both calm and its waves crashing at the same time. I, I can't do it. And he says, it is, it is when I think of that, that I realize that I cannot encompass the Rahmah of Allah. 
how can he be Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim at the same time? That is what makes these two words incredible. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us worthy of his Rahmah in this life and in the next, and you'll appreciate the genius of the companion who says, Ar-Rahman is for this world, Ar-Rahim is for the next world. Look at that, look at how he said it. Ar-Rahman is temporary, just like this world is what? Temporary, and Ar-Rahim will always be there because the next life is what? Permanent, they could see it immediately. So their analysis of the Quran was on point without a 10 minute description. They just got it. You know, may Allah Azza wa help us appreciate and reflect on the power and beauty of the Quran. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. If you enjoyed this video, please do share it with friends and family. If you want to see more videos from this series, click on the box at the top. If you want to see other videos, click on the box at the bottom. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks.